This game is rated M and is intended for mature audiences. Well, I mean, you can't ignore the moon forever. Do you only have one casual outfit? I'm lounging around reading a young adult novel by the name of Bun Bun Dokino. When I spot Michiru out of the corner of my eye, she's hovering awkwardly at the end of the lobby. Her voice is too quiet for an attempt at getting my attention. Perhaps I should just ignore her. <laughs> Why are you so high-pitched? <laughs> It's like when you're trying to lie in Among Us and your voice goes up five octaves. Then again, she's finally left her room for the first time in days, so I suppose some basic so social etiquette would dictate approaching her on my own initiative. What's wrong, Michiru? Need something? <laughs> Even the- oh my gosh, the cat's mimicking her facial expressions. My greeting was somewhat abrupt, but Michiru responds with an instant shriek of rejection. Pretty impressive reflexes. I see. In that case, I'll return to my reading. If she's got something to say, why not just spit it out? It's never easy with this girl. After three full days shut up in her room, th this is all she has to say? What's her deal, anyway? Not that I really care, so long as she doesn't interrupt my reading. I find the page where I left off and return to the world of fiction. But soon enough, I'm emphatically ejected from that pleasant refuge. Specifically, she slaps the book out of my hands. I could have dodged, but I decided it best to allow the girl to do as she pleases. Uh-oh, this is alternate Michiru, or slash Michiru Prime. At the moment, I'm thinking of picking up the book that just fell to the floor. I don't like this Michiru's attitude. You finally show yourself. I'd really like to know who you are this time. Yes, because that's very descriptive. Michiru points next to where I'm sitting, then roughly drops down before I can say a word in response. Her, you don't like that? Then how about this too attitude? Reminds me of a combined forces assault. Accurate. Hmm, this sounds like it's going to be a lengthy discussion. Maybe I should make some coffee first. Insufficient effort on her part, clearly. Guess she'd better practice more. <laughs> Hmm. Oh no, her heart went doki doki, we know what that means. Why well, feel nervous at this point? We're hardly strangers, and we already cleared up the unpleasantness between us. Surely there's nothing to feel awkward about. <laughs> I love how that first sentence had an exclamation point at the end, and yet she's still, like, barely audible. I really don't think that's true. Hmm. Fine. Spare me the attitude and just say it already. After a light snap of the fingers, Michiru earnestly rests a hand on top of my thigh. Wow. Um, okay. How straightforward. Hmm. Date, eh? You'll need to elaborate. I don't understand why I should go on a date with you. What if she's faking the whole multiple personalities thing? That would be an interesting twist. 
Here's the thing, though. If I date her, I have to date you, too. Because it's weird. Hold on a second. Why do I have to go on a date with Michiru? And even if I did some, did have some obligation along those lines, I don't, I don't understand why it matters that I propose the idea. An expression of genuine surprise on her face, Michiru peers into my eyes. What, she's never been turned down before? I mean, Michiru is only like 15, I think. 15 or 16, so, um, yeah, that's perfectly normal. I refuse. In answer to Michiru's predictable response, I clear my throat and begin to explain. Why do you get to decide this? True! If Michiru really wants me to date her, she can try saying so herself. Moving things along while she isn't here strikes me as meddling. No, I understood. I just disagree with what you're saying. You think? Personally, I think holding a conversation with something like you demonstrates a fair degree of mental flexibility. Michiru stands from her seat and flaps her hands around in an exaggerated gesture of exasperation. Takes one to no one. Not sure if you're one to be talking, Little Miss Trouble. Keeping the thought to myself, I pick up the fallen paperback book and search for the page I'd left off on. Previously, Michiru told me that she found it frightening to have problems solved behind her back. I'm not about to start agreeing to secret plans for her benefit. Very true. Running my eyes along the printed lines, I return to enjoying the story. But after a little while, I once again feel the gaze of a certain someone on my face. Did you just say the word stare? She sounds so nervous. Her voice clearly came out louder and higher in pitch than she expected. With a surprised little start, she takes it from the top. What's wrong? The usual Michiru? No, brother. Not quite what I meant, but whatever. I flap the book in my hand in her general direction. I'm reading. Not really. You do know I enjoy books, right? Even if I were to run out of reading material and find myself with nothing else to do, I'd be perfectly content rereading a book from the beginning. <laughs> yes! And then he goes back to reading. I'm having a hard time imagining how one could become busy to the point of instant death. But either way, I can't say my plate is particularly full at the moment. Well, I figured Mitra spends most of her time with other people, and to be alone is probably not very fun for her. Sure, that's nice. Alright, I'm going to get back to my book now. <laughs> Mitra, if you want to do something with me, just say it. <laughs> Not necessary. Alright, I'm going to get back to my book now. Okay, this guy is just the butt on purpose. 
Although, I, I sympathize with Yuji if he's really enjoying his book and someone's bugging him. But, yeah, that could be annoying. But also, this is what Yuji's been doing for the last three days. Oh, no. Mitra is so transparently desperate that I can't help feeling a little sympathy. I suppose it couldn't hurt to play along with the girls' games. Well, hold on. I think you know I do a regular training course every morning, but tomorrow I was thinking about doing a little running later on as well. What do you think? Want to come along on a little afternoon marathon? <laughs> <laughs> a fearsomely rapid response. <laughs> also, you do know I just said marathon, right? There, there ain't no way this girl can run a marathon without training first. Mitru turns her back to me and begins rustling around furtively. What, you've got a day planner on you? Mind if I take a look? Mitru pretends to tap buttons on a calculator. Apparently this is her idea of what checking a schedule involves. Huh. Well, managed to adjust your schedule? Any conflicting appointments? Hmm, I see. In that case, be in front of the school gate at 1 in the afternoon tomorrow. I'll take you along with me. Oh my gosh, can you just drop the Sudari feed already? It's not charming in any way. Fine, sure, whatever. Mitsuru, I don't recall begging you. What was close? And so, it was agreed that Michiru would join in my training. I was planning a fairly long-distance course, though. Wonder if she'll be alright. Uh-oh. Also, I don't remember saying a word about a date. Well, no need to tell her that. <laughs> oh, great. Uh, this is not good, this is not good. The next day I head out of bed at 4.45am as usual, and after some quick preparations head outside for my early morning jog. <laughs> what just happened? But as I emerge into the lobby, I hear a strange clattering sound from Ichiru's room upstairs. I haven't heard anything about the girl tossing and turning in her sleep. Wonder if something happened. Well, I guess it's nothing worth worrying about. <laughs> wow. At my normal time, I run my normal distance in my normal pace. Nothing out of the ordinary whatsoever. But such regularity is precisely the point of a routine course like this. I head back to my room, take a light shower to rinse off my sweat, boil my beans, and have my breakfast, while masticating steadily away. I ponder a certain philosophical dilemma. I'm sorry, are you having beans for breakfast? Do beans have emotions? Some claim that cacti can sense human feelings. What, then, of the bean? They don't scream when you boil them, but perhaps some among them know how to use their bean. Plants might be aware of the world in their own unknowable way. Under such a hypothesis, even vegetarians would be monstrous mass murderers. Brandishing their cruel, shiny knives, they gruesomely flay innocent carrots, chop their bodies into sections, and then consume them to the core. Perhaps we should put a price on the head of those habitually cornflake-crunching cereal killers. Ha ha ha! Huh. Come to think of it, my stocks are depleted. This is no time to be thinking up idiotic puns. Without Sachi and Amine around, I have no one to rely on for the procurement of my foodstuffs but myself. You just rely on them to buy your stuff for you? Huh. Suppose I'll take a quick breath and then head to the supermarket. Or take a quick break. Feeling the calm mid-morning sunlight on my skin, I'm almost tempted to set off for another run before my afternoon training. But there's no point to excessive exercise, unless you're a masochist who finds pleasure in making your body scream. 
Of course, the act of running can be pleasant in its own right. I myself sometimes head out for a jog merely to change my mood. It's just a matter of moderation. I make my way back to the dorm bags full of beans in both hands. I bought in bulk today. If I had slightly more goodness in my heart, I could probably get every small furry animal in a free mile radius through the winter with these. Then again, receiving a mountain of nuts outside my room in the spring from my grateful forest friends would be a serious nuisance. <laughs> I'm sorry, do you think life is like Snow White? <laughs> I think I'll consume these beans on my own. With this much in stock, my basic needs should be met for some time. Hmm? What on earth is that? Aww! She has a new outfit! And it's a cute one! Aww, that's actually a really cute outfit, I like that. She, oh, she's excited, even though it's a marathon training session and not a date. Whoops. There's a woman acting strangely in front of our gate. She digs into the ground with her tiptoes for a moment, only to abruptly twirl around in a circle on the spot. Don't tell me that's... Michiru. Um, do you know anybody else like that? What on earth is that girl doing? I sincerely doubt the outside world will prove nearly so tolerant of her peculiar taste in headwear as we have. <laughs> hey, ha hat cats are gonna be a thing. I did tell her to tag along on my afternoon training, but that's still a good three hours away. What's her objective here? Tell me, Michiru, what exactly are you doing out here? <coughs> After this undignified shriek of surprise, Michiru stares at me with a blank, dumbstruck expression. From all appearances, she seems to be in a state of shock. Is there something wrong with the girl? It's only clear now that I have approached her, but she has numerous bandages on her fingertips. Don't tell me that mangy cat bit her and passed on some strange disease. I did vaccinate the thing, but maybe it was too late. Hello? Do you recognize me? Pull yourself together. Uh, 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 hmm? Say what? An improbable theory pushes its way into my mind. Please, don't tell me she's seriously come to our meeting place a full three hours early. Michiru, my friend, it's still a good three hours before the arranged time. When asked, did you wait long, I can only respond no. In fact, I hadn't even begun. That's my favorite of the casual outfits, though. That's a really nice one. Is this girl even hearing what I'm saying to her? Okay, Michiru, listen carefully. I'm just coming back from shopping at the supermarket by the station, and my training isn't for hours. I wasn't waiting for you, and I'm not going yet. Can you seriously not understand this? My supermarket bag still dangling from both hands, I stand there dumbfounded. The girl's completely off her own in a, her own little world. Yeah, I'm training beans how to jump. Michiru peers into my plastic bags with a face full of confusion. Beans have nothing to do with the training. Listen, I'm going to head back to my room to drop these off, so just stay where you are for now. Guess there's no helping it. I'll bring my schedule forward somewhat. You did. Almost? Like? Well, whatever. Incidentally, we'll be running on a road used by civilians, so remove the cat before we go. Yes, the one on your cranium. <laughs> oh my gosh, which one of these do I use as the thumbnail, though? <laughs> oh, probably that one. That's a cute one. You're disturbing me, woman. Alright then, stand by for the moment. Understood? <laughs> I honestly have no idea what the girl's thinking. I only said that she could come alone for my training, right? What part of that prompted that simpering grin? In the first place, is she seriously planning to run in those clothes? Even a pair of sneakers would have earned partial credit, but no such luck. 
Then again, hardly any point in complaining now. I'm the one who authorized her to accompany me. Suppose I have to roll with it. Aww. She is very excited. Why is the cat back on your head? The feline has reclaimed its perch. How do you not notice something like that? Are the nerves in your head not functional? No. Oh. Poor kitty. I have no idea what was close to that. Strange woman. Why have place a cat on your cranium? Perhaps she's aware that U.S. Marines used to tie ropes around their heads to enable allies high in the rigging to distinguish friend from foe? You can just wear a hat with a four-leaf emblem on the top, Michiru. The insignia is something like an iconized version of the rope they used in the old days. <laughs> yeah, Michiru with a hat could look pretty good. She could also look like the Mad Hatter. I don't think I said anything of the sort, actually. I have to say, though, your clothes today leave a different impression than usual. Yeah, get the feeling you put in some real effort. Wow, way to backhanded compliment her. <sighs> Just tone down the tsundere aspect. That a fact. My impression was that you bought several outfits yesterday, and you carefully chose this one from the many you tried out this morning. Was I mistaken? You weren't in the dorm much yesterday, and you came back with bags from the clothing stores in both hands. Also, I heard you clattering around first thing in the morning. Hmm. You're a troublesome one, woman. Hey, hey, ho. <laughs> hi, ho. Hi, ho. Mitru's gonna get sick, I know. I did say I was training for a marathon. What's the matter, Yosaku? I thought you were being energetic. Something wrong? <laughs> it's easier to calculate your distance that way, right? And consistent road conditions are best for training purposes. Hmm? We took regular breaks, didn't we? Five minutes every hour. What's the problem? That's not enough for the untrained. Yeah, we can, we can make a stop at Culver's. Hmm, I suppose you have a point. It is around that time of day. A somewhat lengthy break might be in order. Her face brightening, Michiru points toward the high spot she's so fond of. Oh, that actually sounds nice. No picnic. We're going back to the dorm, eating there, and then resuming our training. How romantic. Field training in the distribution of portable rations, eh? Well, I suppose it can't hurt. What do the girls see in Yuji? Oh yeah, he's the only male. <laughs> and now she's energetic all of a sudden. <laughs> oh, sheet! We forgot the sheet. Michiru, my friend. 
Well, your head. Mitra retrieves a woven wooden basket from somewhere or other, thrusts her hand inside, and withdraws a plastic picnic sheet. As she expands the sheet, it twists violently in midair and falls to the ground in a tangled lump. She tries again, but the exact same powerful jerk naturally produces the exact same results. Impressive in a way. Such utter ineptitude is that something as basic as spreading out a sheet must be fairly rare. That's rude. Give it here. I'll do it. Like so and so. There's no such profession. Stop. Please say no more. I understand. Yes, those people are pros. I'm an amateur. Cheerfully taking off her shoes, Michiru sits down on the soft plastic sheet. When I remove my sneakers and follow, she places our shoes on the four corners of the sheet. True. True enough. Clever. <laughs> Sandwiches, I imagine. You normally don't make your own food, so it seems unlikely that you cooked rice and prepared side dishes. A sandwich just involves cutting bread and stuffing in ingredients, so it strikes me as the more plausible possibility. I didn't know what sandwiches, that's the classic picnic food. Also, those band-aids on your fingers. I initially thought you might have gotten scratched by the cat, but now I'm thinking you nicked yourself with a kitchen knife. So anyway, what do you make? <laughs> you don't have to sound so sad about it. I see. Well, I'll get on with it. All this talking made me hungry. She actually just got roast beef sandwiches from Arby's. The girl places her offering on the sheet. It's an entire loaf of plain bread. Its interior gouged out and stuffed with salad. What? I fully expected her cooking to be incompetent, but I never anticipated such a novel technique. Okay. I don't think you can call this a sandwich, actually. <laughs> Bread cake? <laughs> That's not a thing. Also, that would be less filling, because you cut out all the, the bready goodness. Yeah, that's why you don't cut out the bread! I'm not going to eat this, Fane. Also, what kind of salad did you stuff it with? Not relevant. I don't like your disrespectful treatment of valuable provisions. Well, I suppose there's no helping it today, but expect more severe punishment the next time you pull a stunt like this. Hmm. A slap to the face. <laughs> I like how she was, like, crying and the cat was just, like, angry at us. Hmm? Why are you laughing? You did say that. That's not what I meant. I'm just telling you to treat food with respect. <laughs> My admonition seems to have been brushed off. I grab Michiru by her twin tails, pull her face to extreme close range, and repeat myself. Hold it. It's not all good. Listen carefully. Treat food with respect. Alright, glad to see you've got the message. <laughs> Look, you don't cut bread out of a sandwich. It's not a sandwich anymore. Quit your whining. Wow, great first date. Well then, I'll have some. <laughs> yes, it was. Mitra's cooking looked beyond terrible, but the taste isn't bad. That's... okay, that's rude. I mean, it's it's bread crust and salad. It probably ain't gonna be terrible. 
Not to say that it's particularly good either, but the gap between it with its appearance works in her favor. Or perhaps I was simply hungry. As I cram the huge lump of bread into my mouth, Mitru watches with a bright smile on her face. Suppose so. Exceeds expectations, let's say. Either way, you worked hard on that, right? It'd be bad manners to turn up my nose. Yes, you did. Anything to drink? I don't want to drink poo poo tea. Never heard of it. Like I said, no. Don't really care. Hurry up and give it here. Mishiru passes me this mysterious beverage in a firmus. The taste is that of a perfectly normal blended tea. Hmm. True enough. I think I sort of understand why this cat likes it so much. Relaxing outside like this, Michiru certainly doesn't seem like a problem child. She looks like a normal girl you'd find anywhere. Nothing. Alright, guess we should get back to the dorm. This is this is not one of those first dates that you would look back on fondly. Just saying. I'm not. Mishra has completely forgotten her tsundere attitude and her desperation. Oh, whoops. She really is a normal girl, isn't she? Right down to the comical array of bandages on her fingers. Yep, that screams normal girl. Do you really want to date me that badly? <laughs> the cat's like, how dare you just say that? Hmm, <sighs> <sighs> pretend, eh? This does not seem like a good or healthy relationship in the slightest. In fact, this seems pretty toxic. Alright, since it's a game, I don't see any problem with that. You went out of your way to buy yourself cute clothes, so it would be wasteful to only use them once. I suppose we can play again. Yeah, it's just a play date, right? Combat drills, not actual battle. <laughs> that cat looks very scared. For the time being, we're going to run another 5 kilometers or so today. How about 20 for the next date? <laughs> cat is not happy. You have a complaint? Meichiru, stand up for yourself. After putting away the plastic sheet, we're off for a little light post prandial <laughs> exercise. Brandial. Well, think you can keep up? You can always head back to the dorm first if you want. I see. What's the watchword then? <laughs> that was cute. Meichiru is grinning as she jogs toward me. Somehow there's a slight smile of amusement on my face as well. The wind is unceasingly pleasant. And the sea below us is infinitely wide. Are cats ever truly happy? Oh yes, they are. They just don't let you show it. When I leave my room the next morning for my daily marathon, I find Michiru standing in the lobby, the library, the lobby with a beaming smile on her face. Surely this can't be what it looks like, but it's probably best to ask for safety's sake. What are you doing out here at this hour, woman? Eh? No, I didn't forget. It was impulsive of me, but I did indeed promise the girl more pretend dates. That said, it's currently 5 in the morning. Does she seriously expect me to play house at this hour? Yes, I agreed to that, but I do have my own life as well. Running in the morning is my daily routine. You're aware of that, aren't you? 
She wants to get breakfast. And what time is it right now? So, what do you want from me? No, I think not. As I may have mentioned, I'm going out for a run right now. Mitsuru's face crumples with disappointment. The girl looks about ready to burst into tears, but for the moment she focuses on swinging her arms wildly in my general direction. Her movements are clumsy in the extreme, but also unpredictable. Every once in a while, an amateur's haphazard swing can become a KO punch to the chin out of sheer random chance. I take a careful step backward and attempt to negotiate. Don't jump to conclusions. Yes, I promised. I'm not saying that the crack of dawn isn't a reasonable time for a play date. Or I'm just saying that the crack of dawn isn't a reasonable time for a play date. <laughs> Let's see. A little past noon, just like yesterday? Seems more appropriate. <laughs> I won't run or hide. In the meantime, why don't you come up with some place for us to go? That's right. You have any problem with that? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> What, so we're not just doing the playdates? We're pretending to be lovers? Hmm. Well, I understand what you're trying to say. In that case, I'll, reti I'll retain decision-making power. How does this sound as a plan for today's date? After a light round of jump squats, we proceed to the death-defying one-rope bridge. Then after removing any watches or other metal objects on your person... Why? The blueprint was just starting to come together. Alright then, let's go with that. The cat looks very exhausted. Michiru waves goodbye with a big smile on her face. Something seems to be missing from this picture. May as well ask for clarity's sake, I suppose. Michiru, my friend. Weren't you supposed to be a tsundere? Don't keep reminding her! I prefer happy, normal-ish Michiru to... Sundere Michiru. Okay, I think randomly wishing horrible deaths on your acquaintances is less Sundere and more... Twisted. Indeed, perhaps I should just fall into the sea. But if I do happen to plunge into a watery grave this morning, I imagine you'll come to deeply regret making such a thoughtless joke. Every night I'll appear in your dreams, standing at the foot of your bed, dripping wet, resentment burning in my eyes. All right, then I'll be going now. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, great thumbnail opportunities. I imagine so. Let that be a lesson to you. Oh, look, you can say a proper goodbye after all. Should have been honest with yourself from the start. And so I was able to safely complete my routine. Daily training of this sort is meaningful precisely because you perform it without fail. No matter how small your stride may be, what's important is to keep steadily putting one foot in front of the other. Surprisingly, many people get it completely backward. When an amateur signs up for a sports gym, they frequently exercise for hours on the very first day without a thought for the consequences, doing more harm than good to their bodies. A workout schedule needs to be the needs to be approached systematically to ensure a steady daily amount of exercise suited to your physical capabilities. Otherwise, you'll quit after a week with nothing but aches and pains for your trouble. That is smart. Yep. When I return to the dorm, Michiru seems to be obediently standing by in her room in preparation for our afternoon outing. I was worried about the possibility of a panting, saliva spewing greeting in the manner of a dog impatiently awaiting its walk, but it seems things aren't quite that bad. Even after taking my shower, there's still plenty of time before our 1pm date. I throw myself down on the bed to read one of the books Sakaki left me before her departure. Today I've got a first-person work of repertoire. 
of reportage written by a war photographer. Unlike fiction, the book captures a vivid slice of reality. Very interesting stuff. There's even a few comic anecdotes, like the time he tried to exchange money inside a disputed region and got handed a stack of newspaper bills with a few real notes on the top and bottom. Clever swindle, taking advantage of the natural assumption that someone's not going to cheat you so blatantly face to face. A simple but effective bit of misdirection, almost like a sleight of hand trick. You're not going to see for something like that until you've cast aside your unconscious assumptions about what couldn't possibly be.